Brad Lee, am I saying your name right? Yes. Lee. Okay, Brad Lee, welcome to the show, man. Thank you. I know you as a tech founder, or at least a course tech company. Is that how you would call it? Yeah, I'd say tech okay. founder. Tech founder, I like tech founder. I know you are a master at social media. I mean, I cannot avoid seeing your face all the time. Millions and millions of views, uh, tons of followers. I know you as a uh, speaker. I know you as a all that stuff, business coach, et cetera. I know you really do a lot of coaching, right? But who are you before all that? What came before uh, the Brad Lee a, that we all know? A jack off. A jack off. Okay, tell me about that. Like your everyday average jack off. Okay. Like kind of a dipshit running around trying to get rich, trying to be rich, mm. you know, trying to look rich, trying yeah. to get laid, mm. trying to hustle, trying to, you know, be cool. Yeah. But that's when I didn't know any better. Mm. You know, I spent probably the first 30 years trying to uh, get rich and, and, you know, win, be cool, you know, get all the things I wanted and needed in life. Mm. And, and uh, I, I did all right. You know, I, I think I got up to like half a million a year. Okay. You know, but I could never break that barrier, yeah. that glass ceiling. And after 30, I think the difference was, and it sounds cliche, but it's true. After 30, I accidentally, I didn't do it intentionally, I started trying to help other people. I, I stopped, again, I didn't know that I was doing this. Yeah. It wasn't a conscious move, but I stopped trying to help myself and I started to help others. And when I started to help others, that's when you know, I broke that ceiling and, and, and actually found quote unquote success. Is that when you started the, uh, the company, Lightspeed? Lightspeed is, is, has, was started then, yes. Okay, and what does Lightspeed do? Lightspeed VT is a web-based interactive training technology. Um, it allows you to create, deliver, track, and measure interactive content. Okay. And that content is generally used for training. A lot of people are using it for marketing now because you can create an interactive piece of content that will convert better than any linear video you can make. The reason is you're able to ask questions and make offers within the content itself rather than follow up later and drip on them and all this other stuff. I always say if you have to drip on your customer, you probably should go to the doctor. <laughs> so you created this software and a lot of, I know a lot of people have used it. I know Grant Cardone has talked about, I think what Damon, uh, John is using. Yeah. Tony Robbins, Zig yeah. Ziglar, John Maxwell, Tom Hopkins. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Major companies, the PGA, UFC, Dang. General Motors. Yeah. So it's is it, is it more of an enterprise type of a system or is this something yeah. that anybody he can use? Uh, you know, I'm trying to make a f course and sell well, for anyone $97. Can use, anyone can use an enterprise system, just FYI. Okay, that's true. But, but the answer is, yeah, it's an enterprise software. It's a technology that was developed over the last 20 years that allows you to create, deliver, track, and measure content. Mm. You know, video-based content. But, yeah. I mean, I can also deliver a PDF, but, you know, it's mainly for videos. Yeah, so where did the idea come from for that? Well, when I was 30, I was, I was, you know, helping somebody make some money. I was teaching them how to sell and I watched their whole life improve. And I thought to myself, wow, man, I've got the ability to, to help people. I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to go help people make more money. Um, and so when I went out on the road to do that, it wasn't working very well and I couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. And so I had to do a little research to figure out what the hell was I doing before when, it, when I was able to do this. Because I was able to grab someone out of a Burger King and show them how to make 15, 20 grand a month, no problem. You know, I could literally take a, you know, regular old Joe and turn him into a freaking badass. And so I went out on the road to do that for a living and I, and I couldn't do it. It was like, what, what's wrong? What's, what's the problem? So it forced me to, to compare what I did and what I'm doing. And what I found were four ingredients that are, that are necessary, I would say, to get the job done. So the four ingredients, number one, good content. You have to know the right way to do it in the first place. Number two, repetition, right? Most people miss this point, especially companies who are quote unquote training their people. It's not training without repetition. Mm -hmm. Number three, practice. Number four, accountability. So when I was working at this organization, taking people out of Burger King and turning them into badasses, the one I helped from the back, which was a lot porter, I brought them up front, showed them how to sell. The reason why I was able to get people to produce and get people to change is because I was delivering good content with repetition, practice, and accountability. I just didn't know that that's what I was doing, but I was doing that. When I went out on the road, I stopped 
doing the practice, the repetition, and the, and the accountability, and I just delivered the good content. Well, the good content alone is not training. That's exposing, mm. right? We're exposing our people to training. It's not training. Training has to have those four things. So once I realized that, I had a choice. You know, I could keep lying to people because I'd sell you on I'll come train your people. But once I realized I'm not really training your people, I couldn't just keep saying I'll train your people knowing I, I'm not. So I thought I got to figure out a way to train them so I can continue this effort. So which was to basically help people make more money. In order to train somebody, you needed those four ingredients. So I was stuck. I could either go to work for these companies and, and deliver it, but I didn't want to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I said, there's got to be a way to do this without having to, you know, work for somebody. And so I knew about the Internet and I knew that the Internet was coming. Um, I was selling websites to companies when they didn't even know what a website was. <laughs> I remember telling companies, listen, you're going to need a website or they won't, you won't be credible. They're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, dude, if you don't have a website, people aren't going to think you're legitimate. I just didn't know I was so early because nowadays, if you don't have a website, yep. nobody believes you. You tell me you're somebody and you don't have a website, I don't believe you. You don't have a social media presence, I don't believe you. I can't Google you, suspect. Yep. So I was doing that way before. So I was already familiar with the internet and I just realized that the internet was a way that I could deliver, track, and measure good content. So I had the good content. I just needed to figure out how to deliver, track, and measure it so we could have accountability, practice, and repetition. So I you know, found some people and built Lightspeed for myself, for my training. And so it started to work. Now I was, now I was able to train people again, and it, it started growing, and then I ran into competition. People said, we use Grant Cardone, we use Tony Robbins, we use all these other people besides me. And nobody knew who I was. So I'm like, you know, I'm better than them. And you know, it didn't, <laughs> didn't matter. They were in love with their gurus. Yep. So I said, well, fine. What you're telling me is if I had the guru that you're in love with on this platform, you'd buy it. And they said, yes. So I thought, well, let me quit trying to sell them me and mm. I'll just go sell the guru me. So I went and closed the people that teach you to close. So I'm the guy that closes the guy that teaches you to close. <laughs> so anyway, I just started closing all the experts. Yeah. And then uh, they used it and it worked and it revolutionized their business. And ultimately, if you think about it, you know, getting rich means ultimately solving problems. Well, I solved my problem and didn't really think about it, but I also solved Grant Cardone's problem and yeah. the dealer's problem and the, the, the customer's problem. I solved a lot of problems on accident through necessity, because I say necessity is the mother of learning. Everyone that, that knows that quote, it's true. Mm. What changed about you before and after becoming rich? Like what changed after you became rich? Nothing. Same person? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think I've, 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 it has nothing to do with money, mm. but I've learned as I've aged and, and lived ethics and integrity. So, I mean, I've changed but not because of the money. Yeah. Nothing has changed because of the money. Yeah. You married? Yep. Kids? Yep. Uh, what's your wife's name? Melissa. What do you love about Melissa? Uh, it'd be easier to say, what don't I love? Because <laughs> I love everything about her. Mm. I love the wrinkles on her nose. I love her nose holes, her nostrils. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if you meant like piercings. No, no like, like I love everything mm. about her. I, you know, she, she's kind, she's patient. She's everything I'm not. Mm. She's uh, considerate, you know. Um, she's loving. She's 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 you know everything I'm not. You're you're a um, we'll say a bold person, you know, personality, right? Like you say what you mean. You you how does that? How does she deal with that personality? A lot of people listening might have a similar personality. Uh, how how has that worked in your marriage, and how have you worked through uh, that? Well, again, I mean. I, she, she, originally she wanted me to tone it down but once she realized that you know that's not an option why yeah. well because dude I think I lose respect for myself if I start to be something I'm not mm. if, if somebody thinks well you're too loud well then you should you should find other people to listen to yeah you're too honest well then don't listen because because in my mind that's how I provide value I think you know I provide clarity in a world of chaos some people just don't like the message because it's too, you know, true. It hits them 
where they don't want to be hit. Mm. It forces them to look in the mirror. Yeah. I think that's what, you know, I follow a lot of, you know, you, Grant Cardone, David Goggins, et cetera, right? Uh, and I do so because oftentimes the things you say will then, yeah, confront that part of me. And a lot of people shy away from that. And there's many times I shy away, like, I won't follow a fitness influencer because it's going to make me feel bad about my fat on my waist, right? Uh, and I try to fight against that. But by leaning into that, right, saying, hey, this is, a, this is something I want to be, I want to be more like Brad. I want to be more like Grant. I want to be more like David. Uh, that has improved my life in a big way. So who do you follow? I mean, who do you look up to as like, that's somebody I want to be more like in life? Well, I mean, I think I, 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 I follow everybody in that regard. Like, uh, uh, you know, in particular, you know, again, like celebrities, actual celebrities. Because, again, to me, people call me a celebrity. Dude, I'm no celebrity. <laughs> um, you, you might say I'm an Insta famous or whatever. But to me, a real celebrity is like Leonardo DiCaprio. Sure. Like, that's a celebrity. Brad Pitt. Yeah. Okay. Like these are celebrities. Um, I admire a lot of various people for various reasons, but I don't um, necessarily want to be anybody else. Yeah. I'm pretty happy. Yeah. Being me. Yeah. Like, I I'm surprised more people don't want to be like me. <laughs> <laughs> like what do I listen? It's fun being yeah. me. Why? Cause I don't, I don't need everybody's validation. Most people wake up every day seeking validation of other people, and it must be just a nightmare mm. because, dude, I can't control whether you give it to me or not. And what if you didn't? And that's what I relied on. That's so true. So how do you deal with how does somebody like and I'll admit I'm oftentimes somebody who wants to be I want to be liked. I have that need to be liked. By As everyone. do I. Yeah, so how do you overcome that? How do you overcome that and just speak your mind without being uh, yeah, without Without well, shying away from well, it, like again, I, tend to. I like donuts, but I can't eat them every day. Mm. Why? Otherwise, the consequence will be I'm fat. Yeah. So I want to be liked, but I can't. I can't, you know, worry about it. Otherwise, the consequence is insecurity and depression and all this other thing. So what I realize is, you can't make everyone happy. Agree? Yes. So if you can't make everyone happy, you must now choose who to make happy. Agree? Yep. So. How do you choose between your mom and your dad and your brother and your sister and your friends and your family and all these other people in the world when you can't control anything about them? It would be foolish to try and choose. So I choose me because I can control me. Mm. I, I know me. I can have a word with myself and you know have some sort of impact on me. So what I do is I say, if I'm going to make someone happy, it's going to be me. And I believe that. And I think everyone should. I've been quoted saying, I'm the most important person in my life. Mm. And I am. Well, that's rude to say. Yeah. That is not rude to say. You're more important than your children? Absolutely. You're more important than your wife? 100%. Like, I'm the most important person in my life. And everybody should feel the same way. Mm. And that's the problem is they don't. They don't. They give the power to somebody else. They give that power through seeking validation, through, you know, you know, not wanting to offend, you know, not wanting to make anybody upset. Like, dude, you're making yourself upset. So you're, you're less valuable than this person because that's ultimately what you're saying. Just be you. Be happy. Find what makes you happy. If they don't like it, dude, that's their problem. That's them, not you. Like, worry about you. It's like if, it's like if you look at people, they, they are their worst friend. Yeah, that's true. But, but you can't get rid of yourself, but you, but you keep lying and cheating and screwing yourself over and worrying about everybody else and putting everybody else first. Yeah. I love it when people say they don't like salespeople. They're not salespeople. Some of the best salespeople in the world are the ones selling themselves out of everything that they want. Oh, I'm not very good at negotiating. Dude, you negotiate yourself out of everything you want every single day. You're the, one of the best negotiators in the world. <laughs> Yeah, I often think, you know, I, if, if you and I were going to go to the gym later, you call me, you're like, hey, Brandon, let's go to the gym. Like, let's meet there at four. I'm going to show up at four because I'm going to, I value a friendship and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show up. But if I set a goal for myself, right, I'm going to go to the gym at four o'clock today. How often will I not show up to the gym? And that speaks to that point of I am much more likely to want to please you or to make you like me than I am to support myself. And so I'll lie to myself. Yeah, I'll, I'll let myself down. I'll let myself off the hook. I won't hold myself accountable. You'll negotiate. Negotiate with myself all the time. And what's funny is you're negotiating yourself out of what you actually want. Yeah. 
yeah, it's, it's a rough place to be, but uh, you know, over time I've learned to compensate for that in, in, in ways, but I'm not great at it all the time. Uh, so uh, do we all fall short? Don't yeah, we? yeah, we do. We do. So uh, what, where do you get your motivation from? I mean, when you, I mean, you, you recently, I know I was like a year, maybe a year ago, I saw a video. You're like, I'm going to get in shape. And then like, you just got in shape. Like you got looking better and better all the time. Like where does that motivation come from for you? It's usually just a notion, you know, I saw someone with abs and I thought, damn dude, I should be, I should have abs, <laughs> you know, but in reality, we all fall short. You know, I go, I get in shape, then I get out of shape then I get in shape then I get out of shape. Why? Well, yeah. cause once I get in shape, I start to, you know, rationalize why I don't need to eat that way anymore. Mm, yep. Look at me. I mean, I don't need to eat that way. Look at me. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you don't look that way anymore. And you're like, son of a bitch, what mm. happened? Well, what happened is you stopped doing the things that were good yeah. and you stopped being consistent and you stopped being disciplined and that will always cause some sort of decline. Well, we all fall short. So yeah. at the end of the day, you'll see me up, you'll see me down. Now, I know people like a couple of my buddies, they're just ripped and they're ripped 24 seven. Why? Because they already learned that if you go up and down, up and down, up and down, you're not gonna be where you wanna be. Well, I'm not that way, personally. Like, I don't wanna die and never have a cupcake. Yeah. I don't wanna die eating fucking cauliflower. <laughs> <laughs> or some shitty ass food. Like I want to enjoy a little bit. Yeah. So, so to me, I don't really care that I'm not 3% body fat. Sure. Somebody else might care. I don't. And that's why people are like, well, like right now, because of this Pineda deal, uh, a guy named Andy Elliott's in town. You know, Andy, I don't, but he's on my like dream, like 10 list to, get oh, to know someday. Yeah. He's a buddy of mine. He's a client dude. of mine too. So I, I mean, I'll grab, I'll grab him for you, but dude, yeah, but he says, are you working out with us tomorrow? And I'm like, no. He goes, why not? And I go, I don't like group exercise. Mm. Everybody that goes to those things he does started laughing their asses off. Oh, that's so funny. I'm like, why is that so funny? Because you just said I don't do group exercise. I don't like it. I'm yeah. not going to show up just to sit around with 18 other dudes and sweat and be told what to do. I don't even like being told what to do. But that doesn't mean I won't work out. See what I'm saying? Yeah. I'll, I'll go to my gym. I'll go do my thing. I don't really care that they're all shredded and six packed up. Like yeah. I know why they're shredded and six packed up. Do you? Mm, Cause because they have discipline, consistency, mm. they do the work. They're, they're, sure. they're, they're obsessed with looking that way. Yeah. I know in my years that is not the above all when you die, I would rather die kind of pudgy <laughs> and happy yeah. than fucking shredded and miserable. Yeah. Yeah, there's this great video I saw. I went viral on TikTok or Instagram. It was this, this lady talking about, she said, do you want to become unrecognizable in 2023? She's like, water with lemon every single morning. And then she like lists the stuff, you know, go to the gym every single morning. And, blah, and she does this list. And you're like, oh yeah, this is really good stuff. And she's like, when your friend invites you out for coffee, just say no. And when, you know, you're at that birthday party and they offer that cake, you know, just walk out the door and leave. And it gets worse and worse until at the very end, she's like, there you go, you're unrecognizable. And it's basically like you can ruin your life by trying to be perfect and trying to hit and, everything right. And what are you trying to do origin, uh, uh, initially or ultimately, what are you really trying to do? Feel better you're, about yourself? No, you're trying to become what everybody else thinks you Ooh, should be. Yeah. Like, why don't you become what you think you should be? If yeah. I thought I should be six pack, low body fat, yep. crazy person, well, then I would be. Yeah. But I don't, I don't think that. And it's okay that I don't think that. I don't have to think like you do. I don't yeah. have to think like Andy does. Andy believes you should. Yeah. He will tell everybody, you need to work out every day. You need to show up here and you need to freaking stop eating shit food. I, don't, I agree that you shouldn't eat nasty all the time and you yeah. should focus on your health. But I don't agree that you should never, ever enjoy yourself. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, definitely a balance there that I think people... I mean, if, if Andy or others that are just ripped like that, like... Good for them if they're yeah. super happy there. I'm not super happy there. Yeah, and, and, and again, I mean, some, sometimes you go a little far too far this way. Like, now, well, now you're eating too much. Well, yep. well who's the judge? Yeah. That's the question. Yeah. Who is the judge? Yeah. And the answer should be, if you're, if you're smart, you're the judge. Yeah. Okay, well, then only you get to decide what that should look like, and mm. everybody else can fuck off. Yeah. And that's my opinion. So speaking of Andy... And yeah. by the way, do you guys cuss on this thing? Because sure. if you don't, I'm blowing you, it for you. Got, you. you got this, man. All right, good. I, I, I'm all about authenticity. Uh, speaking of Andy, great sales trainer, uh, sales dude, right? No sales, like, better than almost anybody I know. But you as well are a phenomenal sales trainer. So what, 
where did that come from? Were you always good at sales? That's what you're born with. Did you learn it? Is it key phrases? Like where do, where does somebody get good at selling uh, in life? Well, I think we're all ready good at selling. Again, we sell ourselves, we sell our kids, we sell our wives, mm. we sell every day, all day. Uh, the, the, the difference between good ones and bad ones are the bad ones don't know they're doing it. Mm. <laughs> the good ones realize they're doing it and then they sure. put some time and practice and energy and realize that it's just like MMA. You know, if you go fight a black belt as someone who doesn't fight at all, you're probably gonna get your ass kicked. Now, is there, are there natural fighters? Yeah, there's people that'll do a little better naturally, but they're not gonna do anything to a trained fighter. Yeah. So if you want to go compete with a black belt, you better start training. Well, that's when it, that's what sales is about. You got to realize you are in sales, whether you like it or not. And now go train, train takes good content, repetition, practice, and mm. accountability, not expose, you know, you can't just expose yourself to training and then expect to be trained. You yeah. have to train. So anyone can do it, but you do have to be trained. You have to understand. And by the way, I would train from all kinds of people not just Andy, not just me, everybody. Like go, go listen to Grant Cardone, go yeah. listen to Zig Ziglar and Tony Robbins and all the people who have sales training on the subject. You know, there's people that have died that have some of the best sales training ever. You know, um, Og Mandino, I think uh, he wrote, um, what the hell did, what was that book called? Um, <laughs> the Greatest Salesman in the World. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all Bible based, you yeah. know, that's some good stuff. So like go learn from everybody and then see what, you know, resonates with you and, and use that. Because when I teach people to sell, believe it or not, the first thing I'm teaching them is to stop selling. Like right now, if I'm trying to sell you, my intentions or my frequency is lower than if I'm trying to help you. Mm. So if you just shift your perspective from I'm not selling you anything, I'm, gonna, I'm here to help you, your, your vibration changes because I'm, I'm trying to help you, bro. And that's the truth. Yep. I don't want to sell you if I can't help you. And that's the truth. See, if that's not true, well, then your vibration is being masked and it's yep. not going to help. You need to shift your thinking. Quit trying to sell people. Start to help people. And if you say, well, I don't really think my shit helps anyone, then stop selling that shit. Yeah. Go find something that you actually believe helps people. And then your vibration changes and you have much better success just from the get-go without any other skill or technique. Like there's listening skills. And there's, you know, closes and rebuttals and techniques that you can implement that actually do work. NLP, believe it or not, that shit does work. Um, there's, well, that's manipulation. Folks, you can call it whatever you want, but if I'm a, if I'm a uh, MMA fighter that's winning, that's manipulation too. I'm manipulating your ass into sure. a fucking tapping out. Sure. But it's all manipulation. You think people should use people? Should people use people? Sure. Yeah, like you ask normal, normal people, do you think it, it's okay to use people? They'll be most like, people no. Say no. Yeah. Dude, the, the most intelligent societies <clears throat> in the world use each other. Yeah. They leverage each other. Yep. And, and I believe you should use people and you should be used. Yeah. And, and everyone should use each other to, to build, you know, as high as you can go. But to me, you know, most people will not agree that you should use people. Yeah. That's a bad thing. It's not bad. It's your perspective that's bad. All right, here's a question for you. I was actually just talking to Alex uh, over there yesterday about, you know, being a, you know, whatever we, we are, niche celebrity, micro influencer. I don't know what terms are. Are we? Us. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know if uh, I want Instagram to models. That's what we're going to call ourselves. Okay. Uh, being, being, being an Instagram model. Uh, everybody in my world or many people in my world that surround me are either employees or people that I can uh, that need something from me or would love to have something from me, whether it's fame or I transfer some of my, you know, whatever audience over to them, or they want on the podcast. Uh, my assumption is that you have the same thing. People in your world, either are, they work for you or they would love to be on your show or they would love something from you. How do you, uh, look at that idea of like, we'll call it celebrity for, for lack of a better word, but like celebrity and friendship, how have you, uh, reconciled those two things in your life? Does that make sense? Like, do you think about like people? Just say it. In yeah. Words. Yeah. Let's yeah. Take yeah. One of those sound bites. <laughs> okay. Sound bite here. How do you deal with the fact that most of your people around you need some, want something from you? Uh, How do I deal with it? Yeah. Like, do does that? I, I no, well, number does one. Does that worry you? Not at all. Matter of fact, would the opposite be better? Nobody no. needs you. Yeah, no. 
Right. So it's like, dude, I, 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 I like the fact that I'm needed and yeah. wanted and, and all that. And I also like the fact that I'm able to help. Why? Yeah. Well, because, dude, that is how you become successful. Yeah. The, the more people you can help, the more successful you will be mm. in my book. Mm. I believe if I can help you, that's wonderful. Yeah. Not only that, I, I don't think, well, how can you help me? Yeah. That just happens usually. If I just did nothing but try and help you, help you, help you, help you, help you, I'll bet you you'll spend more time thinking about how you can help me than I would. Mm. Because you'd be like, dude, I love this guy. Yeah. Like every time he comes around, something good happens. Yeah, you're right. And all I'm doing is trying to figure out how can I help this dude? Now, again, there's people that want on my podcast because they know that my podcast get, has actual listeners that yeah. actually buy and actually move yep. based on it. And so they want on my podcast. Well, I could help a million people and, and, and it doesn't bother me. Yeah. You, you, you want to get on my podcast and you have interests. I mean, yep. if I have interests, meaning like I, I, you say you're in real estate, dude, yep. I've already had a hundred million real yep. estate agents. Like, what am I going to talk about again? Yep. You know, but I've had my fill of realtors, but again, some interesting ass realtor like yourself, like the fact that you're also in real estate, that doesn't make you a realtor by the way. Yeah. But see my point, like in other words, I have to have interest that, that I need your knowledge out to the world. Yeah. That's how you get on my podcast. People have paid to be on my podcast. People have called me and said, well, I want on your podcast. I'm like, eh. and they're like, you know, well, what if I gave you 20 grand? I said, you give me 20 grand. Well, let me hear, let me look a little deeper. And I'm like, well, there's an interesting angle yeah, yeah. I could go with. So I say, sure, pay me 20 grand. I'll put you on my podcast. And they're smart. Why? Because they end up doing far more than that in business. Sure. But do I have a paid podcast? No, you can't just walk up and say, here's 20 grand. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll they be still too. have to be good. They, I have to be, have an interest yeah, in 100%. what they're saying because my interest ultimately in life is to get the knowledge from the people who have it to the people who need it because I believe that's why people are failing. Yeah. Like my dad, believe it or not, you know, his whole life, uh, he was a hard worker. He did all the things you hear you have to do and he didn't make it. Mm -hmm. He wasn't financially successful. He tried to, he just didn't have the right information. So at the end of the day, I think if we can get the knowledge from the people who have it to the people who need it, we're gonna all live in a more successful world. Right. Yeah. So like in your case, if you got a billion dollars in real estate, well, then you have some knowledge that people need. Why? Because that's not normal. How did you do that? Like now I want you on the podcast so I can say, how did you do that? Because there's people out there wondering. And quite frankly, part of what I teach people is if you want to get anything you want in life, it's pretty simple to do. First thing you have to do is figure out what it is. That's the hard part. Most people think that's the easy part. The second thing you do is figure out how to get it which that's the easy part. Most yeah. people think that's the hard part. People are like, what do you mean? If you knew how to get it, you, well, all you have to do is find someone who's already got it. Find someone who's already done it. That's pretty easy, right? Sure. So if I figure out who you are or what I want, then I figure out that you already yep. did it. Well, I'm going to figure out what you did yep. and I'm going to go do that work. So I yep. do the work. That's step three. Figure out what you want. Figure out how to get it, which is who did it already and then do the work they did. And I'll bet you anything, most cases, yeah. you'll get what they got. Yep. Now people say, well, not always. Dude, are you looking to be negative or are you <laughs> looking to be positive? Like, you gotta have an optimistic outlook. Yeah. You have to have abundance. Scarcity is something that I don't have. Yeah. Like when people ask me about, you know, well, how'd you take this risk and that risk? And it's like, it, was it really a risk? And they're like, oh, you could have lost everything. There's more. Like how you lose everything if there's more? Yeah. But what if you lost all your money? How is that possible? I'd go get more. Yeah. There's more money out there. Yeah. Oh, well, geez, you know, you might not get any. That's scarcity. Yep. I don't have that. Yeah. I know I can get more money. Yeah. So you, the opposite of a scarcity mindset, we might call it an abundant mindset. 100%. There's a ton of people in the world that don't have that. I mean, I would guess 90% of people I know just don't, don't have that. Yeah. How does one develop an abundant mindset? Well, it's really, again, evidence-based if you ask me is like you have to have a little experience or trust yeah because again trust me there is an abundant mindset so if the if you know that there is one what does it look like you know start studying start researching start getting new information and that new information starts to change your beliefs and then your beliefs change yeah. and you become abundant because you you i used to be scarcity mindset now i'm abundant mindset so how, what changed new information like new information changes your beliefs. Your beliefs control your actions. So if you want to change what you're getting or what you have, you have to change what you do 
and what you think. Yeah. And the only way to change what you do and what you think is to, is to change your belief system. Yeah. And your belief system can only be changed with new information. Because if you have the same information, nothing will change. So you seek new information, right? You yep. be open to it. Obviously, you identify that you want to do it. But then you just literally get new information to where your beliefs begin to change. And they will over time, some, some quicker than others. Like if I, if I made you believe that your hand would not burn in a flame, you know, you might believe it, but it'll change instantly as soon as you do that. And you get new information that, hey, it does burn. So you'd stop believing me and you'd start believing that it burns. And guess what? You would change your beliefs instantly. But sometimes it takes time, takes evidence. Let me let me let me look. Let me see. Let me think. Let me test. But it ultimately, I think, boils down to logic. Logic tells me that there's abundance. Mm. What, what is there a limitation of? People even say diamonds. Dude, there's no limitation of <laughs> diamonds. They, they, they control that market. Yep. 100%. There's no limitation in this world. There's only abundance. That's great, man. That's great. Yeah, my, uh, my team tends to uh, yell at me for being too abundant in the mindset. I'm like, I oh, just buy it. Yeah, we need more lights, just buy it. Like, we'll get more That's money. What I do. Yeah, we'll get more money. We'll figure it out. Dude, someone yesterday said, well, how do you do your budgeting process? I yeah. said, what do you mean? They said, you know, when you set your budgets for the year, I said, dude, I got to be honest with you. I don't set budgets mm. for myself. Yep. They're like, no, for your company. That is me. Yeah. My company is me. Yeah. So why would I limit myself? Yeah. Now, would I ever set budgets? Absolutely. For you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's not what for you can me. Spend. Yes. I'm not setting a limit <laughs> for me. I don't have limits. Yeah. I'll set limits for you. Why? Well, because you're not me and this is my money and my company. So I'm going to give you X to get the job done. Yeah. And if you need more, you come back to me because I don't have limits. Yeah. You do. Yeah. Right. So again, I don't yep. set budgets for my company. Mm. Why? Because I'm still running it. Yep. As soon as I'm not running it and you are, I'll set some limits. One of the phrases I, I drives me nuts is when people say like, what's your marketing budget? And I'm like, that doesn't even make, like that doesn't make sense. If it's, if it's marketing, it makes me money. It's going to make me more money. And if it's not, if it's making me more money than I'm spending, then I'm going to spend unlimited. And if it's not making money, I'm going to spend nothing. So I'm like, the budget is zero dollars or infinite dollars. Like, but when people well, complain. If they have a better question, they should say, what do you spend a month on marketing? Yes, yes. Because that's a different question. It is a different question. I hate the word budget. Why? It's yeah. scarce based. Yes. It's like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've had employees, I've had to tra I've train out of this over the years where they say, well, what's the budget for the event? I'm like, the what do you mean the budget? Like if I take 10 grand, okay, great. They'll go out there and then the first vendor who's like, yeah, we can do it for 10 grand. Great. And I'm like, no, the budget is $0 or as close to that as you can get to make it the best thing it can possibly be. And that mindset, I've had the hardest time getting that through people's head of like, I can't just that's give you a budget. That's why there's a 1% and a 99%. Mm. There you go. If you ask me. Yeah. I mean, again, there's some exceptions in there. You know, someone buys a camera, like you could go buy much better cameras than these, or I should say much sure. more expensive. Cause yes. to me it might not be better, sure. way more expensive. Yep. You don't need more expensive. Yes. So if I hired someone and went and bought, you know, five red cameras with hundred thousand dollar <laughs> lenses to make shit for the internet. Yeah. They just proved to me they don't know what they're doing because yep. you don't need those. Yes. And I'd let them go. Why? Not because they went over budget because they're not that fucking bright. Yeah. Like I want the guy that says, dude, you don't need a red camera for this shit. We need a fucking Canon. Yes. Good. That's the budget then. Yep. Canon. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's more about the, the outcome. What is the outcome you want? Like, that's the question we should be like, the team should be asking. And, and you guys are good at that. Especially Alex is like, what, what do we want it to look like? Okay. Now I'm going to find the best way to get it to look like that for the least price. Great. That's, that's where I want to angle that one. So let's talk about getting rich for a minute. Okay. If someone's got no money, What's the fastest way to a million dollar net worth? Well, the fastest way is to, is to borrow it. Okay. Don't you think? <laughs> I, I do. I mean, I'm a real estate guy. We borrow it all the time. Well, I mean, that's the fastest way from, that I've learned. Okay. Is just to borrow it. So how does somebody go? Like if you had to, if you were coaching me and I was 25 years old, I have no money. I got no skill set. Really. I want to build a million dollar net worth. What do I even, what do I do sales? Is it real estate? Is it, you know? Well, well, again, to me, there's only three things that are, that are going to matter when, when it comes to that, your mindset, your skill set, and your habits. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to look at those, you know, what's your mindset? 
if your mindset's all messed up, you're scarce and I'm going to fix that first. Yeah. Then what, how are your skills? You know, do you have any skills? Are you good at anything? Cause if you're not good at anything, dude, you got to get good at something. Yeah. So let's work on your skill set, and then I'm going to work on your habits. Like what are you doing every day? What actions are you taking? And I'm going to look at those three areas and I'm going to fix whatever's wrong. And then you'll be way more than a millionaire. Yeah. Usually when I fix their mindset, the rest falls into place. Sure. So I always go first to mindset because again, to me, that's what's going to make you or break you. There's people that literally are, are fabulously wealthy because of their mindset. Yeah. It has nothing to do with their skill set. Now, again, it does lean into skill set. You have to have something yeah. that you can do that you're good at to market. But ultimately, again, I mean, if you're 25 years old, you know, you probably don't know this yet. It took me a while to learn it. Um, so I would inform you and hopefully maybe that turn a light bulb on and, and it change. I've had literally a bunch of people say, you changed my life. And I'm like, really? It's to me, that's that's drastic, like life yeah. changing. Yeah. And I'm like, what did I say? And they said, well, you came out on stage and you said to brush your teeth. And I'm like, and I thought to myself, you didn't know that? Yeah. They're like, well, I mean, uh, you know, I, I would, but you know, sometimes what you said was, and it made me start thinking, aha, that's what it did. It made you start thinking. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Most people aren't thinking. They're just hoping and dreaming and praying and sure. like, think, man, it's not that difficult success. You, go, you need to find people to help. The more people you help, the more success you'll have. The more hands you shake, the more money you make. Is it hard to shake hands? No. no. Do you not know how to shake more hands? Well, of course I do. Well, then why aren't you doing it? Well, I wanna be rich. Go shake hands. Why would I shake hands? Well, folks, I hate to tell you this, but all the money comes from other people. Hmm. Right? So you yep. want more money? Dude, I guarantee you it's the other people who have it. Yes. So now what? You have to know other people. How, how, how are they supposed to give you money if they don't know who you are? So now you have to go introduce yourself. You have to shake hands. You have to get known. You have to build a brand. You have to get, you know, publicity, et cetera, et cetera. The more hands you shake, the more money you make. It's not rocket science. Every dollar you've ever received came from a relationship. So if you want more money, go get more relationships. Now, their next question, when I say that, is usually, well, how do you get more relationships? Are you kidding me? Like, you don't understand how to go introduce yourself to random people, strangers? Now, again, go to a crack house and introduce yourself to all the drug dealers and crackheads. Do you think that's smart? That no. goes without saying. Like, now, now we're called targeting. Like, use your fucking brain. Go introduce yourself to people that you want to be like. Go introduce yourself to people who you think might be able to help you or inform you or educate you or better you somehow start introducing yourself to those type of people is what I'm saying. I'm not saying the more crackheads, you know, the richer you'll be, unless you're a drug dealer, then that'll be true too. That's, yeah, that's your target. But my point is, is guys, it's not rocket science, man. Go out and introduce yourself. Yeah. Now the question is, is why aren't you? Hmm. And, and it starts to get, the answer starts to get deep. You don't because you don't value yourself. Yeah. You don't think you have anything to offer. So if you really want to raise your net worth, raise your self worth, start there. You know, I, I've literally shown people how to double their income by doubling their price. Mm. They're like, what are you doing, dude? I, all you said was raise your price. No, what I said is raise your worth. You know, I'm charging 50 bucks an hour and, you know, I'm making 16 grand a month. And, you know, I, I've been there for a while. I don't know how to make any more. You know, well, are you this? No, oh, I'm busy. I'm, bu I'm busy. That's how I'm making all my money. I'm busy. Well, if you're so busy, you know, value your time a little bit more charge a hundred dollars an hour oh I never thought of that you know then they charge a hundred dollars an hour and guess what they're still just as busy and yep. now they're making twice as much and yep. what they do what they do different nothing they valued themselves more mm. so again if someone's listening to this dude that, duh well if it's so duh how come you're doing what you're doing for what you're doing it for why don't you raise your worth you know double your prices well if I double my prices no one will value me no one will hire me What's that sound like? Scarcity. Yep. Now you're back in that scarcity mindset. You don't value you, which is why you're assuming they won't value you. Well, not at that price, because I'm in a, in a market where, you know, everyone will do it for 50 bucks. Everyone will do what? Be you? How can everybody be you if you're you? Mm. They can't, 
right? You're unique now. Now you're starting to build that self-worth, self-value. A million people have proven it over time, dude. Yeah. There's people that do the exact same shit for 10 times the money. Yep. And, and people pay it. Why? Because they value them because they value them. Yes. Anyway, it's yeah, and, they, and they have the skill set to back it up, right? Like the, it, it's sometimes, not sometimes. Not always. Mm, not always. But, you know, if I if I am a speaker, let's say, right, and I'm charging 10 grand, uh, if if I'm a better speaker, I mean, to, to prove your point, if I'm a better speaker, can I charge 20? Not necessarily. If I think I'm a better speaker, I can probably charge 20. You can like, charge 20 just by deciding that yeah, you charge 20. I mean 20, yeah. Because I get 50. Why yeah. don't I get 100? <laughs> I get, you know how much I get for paid for speaking? How much? Zero. I've never charged anybody That's why you get speaking. nothing. That's why I get nothing. But it's, and I, it, by the way, might you not speak if you yeah. charged? Maybe. Maybe. But guess what? Charge. Yeah. Why? Because, dude, I have better shit to do than speak to your fucking audience. Yep. So, like, I ain't getting paid for Ryan, by the way. Sure. <laughs> Me I have friends that, that come to mine and or, yeah. you know, I'm doing a favor for yep. and or I just like them. Yeah. I don't charge everybody. Same. But. Yeah. 90% of them I do. Yeah. And when they call me, they say, how much? I say 50 G's and they say, okay. Yeah. Or well, can you do it for 30? And then I go, mm, I don't know who, who, who is it? And wh how many people are going to be there? And like, yeah. you know, cause in my mind, you're, you're basically having me, uh, invest with you. Yep. So I need to know some information. You want me to invest 20 G's yep. and give me only give yeah. me 30. Well, tell me about it. What's wh who is it? What is it? But where did I get 50 G's? Nowhere. Out of my ass. Yeah, you just said. It, it was 25 when mm -hmm. I started. And the only reason it was 25 is because I had all these speaker buddies that were professional speakers. Yep. Because one of our clients is the National Speakers Association. Mm. So I've got speakers that you see and hear of, and, and you, you, like they don't get as much as you think they do. Yeah. But one of them, who, who wasn't real big, but they were getting $10,000 a speech. And they kept going, dude, $10,000. And if one day you're going to be able to get $10,000. So someone asked me to speak one time, and they said, what do you want? And I said, 25000 and they said, okay. And I thought, <laughs> damn, I should have said 50. Yeah. But I didn't. I said 25. Yeah. And so they said, okay. They wrote me a check. And then the next person called. I said 25. And then the next person called. I said 25. And some of them said they don't have it. And some of them said no. Yeah. And, and, but the rest wrote the check. And then one day I said to my assistant, Maria, who, by the way, will tell you my pricing because I usually don't. Yep. I'm going to start charging 50. And she goes, why? And I said, because I'm worth it. Ah. And, he, and, and she said, got it. And then the next person called, they, she said 50. They said, okay. Mm. And the same thing happened. And it's crazy because I just made it up. I should have said 100. <laughs> and by the way, January 1, I'm going to 100. 100, yeah. And the reason, real reason is because I value my time and myself yep. more the, the smarter I, I, I get. Yep. Like when I was charging 25, I probably wasn't worth 25. Mm. Now I'm way worth 50, yep. number one. Number two, um, the more valuable I get, the more I want for my time. Because, dude, think about it. Your free time yeah. should be the most expensive. Yep. And if you want me to take my time yeah. to come to your event and talk to your people, yep. well, then I want X amount of dollars in exchange. Yeah. Otherwise, I, I, I have things to do. Yeah. Like, I, I don't have time to do it. Now, again, if you're a friend, I'll, sure, I'll come, to, yeah. I'll come by. Like, you ain't paying me to do this. Yeah. And you believe, do you know that there are people that will charge you to be on their podcast? <laughs> I had a guy call me, and he, he was talking about a celebrity. I won't say yeah. their name. You know, how would you like so-and-so? I'm like, yeah, that'd be freaking awesome. Then they said, okay, I forget the number. Yeah. But it was, write them a check. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't write checks for guests, yeah. why? Well, because I have a million of them yeah. to choose from, and until I don't, I don't need to pay for guests. And the celebrities don't always give the biggest shows either. I mean, not only that, yeah. they, like what are they gonna do? Yeah. You know, they're gonna legitimize you. Dude, I'm yeah. already legitimate. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't, need, I don't need a celebrity to be legitimate. However, I would love them, yeah. why? Because I wanna talk to them, I wanna yes. pick their brains, and you know, but at the end of the day, am I willing to pay them? Yeah, depending on the one. Yeah. Like I would pay Brad Pitt. Yeah. I'd pay Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. I'd pay real celebrities. Yep. I'm not going to pay uh, the top realtor in yeah. Omaha. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and by, I don't know why I keep picking on real estate because you said you, were, <laughs> you did real estate. I'm a real estate investor. I wouldn't put myself in the uh, realtor category well, I yet. get a lot of people wanting want oh, to. Sure. They're realtors. Yeah. And, and realtors, I'm like, yeah, I'm like mm. oh, you're the top realtor. Great. What'd yeah. you make last year? And they're yeah. like, you know, 380. Yeah. I'm like, okay, again, that's pretty good decent money i guess but um what are we going to talk about yep. how you did it yeah 
Who wants to learn how you did that? And by the way, I've already done it because there are people that want to learn that, but I've already done it. Like, let's move on. What, uh, what what information can I share that we haven't shared? Yeah. And by the way, it can still be real estate based, but it needs to be new. I've already talked about your number one agent. Okay, great. Now let's talk about other things. You've got a billion dollars in assets. Let's talk about that. Yeah. And then once I've had one or two or three of those, I don't need to keep talking about it. Let's move on. Yeah. But that's how I keep the show interesting. I think. Yeah. And it's like getting that. bigger and better every year. So, I mean, how, how do you get guests? I mean, what have you, uh, you, you've had some big guests. Um, yeah. I how, mean, you know, I got Andrew Tate and Tristan yeah. coming. I got yeah, Jordan dude. Peterson. I got Dan Pena. I got Michael Vick. I got this girl named Kinsey coming. I'm really I know Kinsey. About, yeah. yeah. She's, we're hanging out next week. She's coming to Maui. Dude, That's I've never live. met her, but like, yeah. what an incredible Yeah. Helicopter pilot, person. real estate investor, And the fact that model. she's female and yep. a good looking female yep. is even better because yeah. like, I don't know any females very few males are like that yeah people are like what are you a misogynist what is yeah. the difference uh dude there's a difference yeah like she's in my mind i'm like i'm, I'm thinking like dude this girl's incredible yeah she's jumping out of planes yep. she's doing all this crazy stuff she must have come from a successful family yeah i don't know her background but See, I, i'm yeah. interested like yeah. you got to be from a rich family like how in the hell are you learning all this shit at your young ass age yeah and how are you willing to even do it yeah like dude you got to have some nerve did you see her wing walk yeah yeah. Like, wild. are you out your damn mind? She got up <laughs> on in the thing while they were flying. Like, yeah. dude, no way. Was she strapped in? Like, how'd she do that? Yeah. I wouldn't even get in one of those planes, let alone wing walk one, let alone get into the apparatus <laughs> in the air. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's to, the you, mindset you know, I want to dig into. You strap me in yep. on the ground and take off that way. Yeah. But anyway, dude, I got yeah. her. I got her coming in. So I mean, I, I have I have a lot of uh, very interesting people. Yeah. So how do you do that? I mean, are you are you is it you out there networking, building relationships, asking for people? Are they coming to you? Do you have people that a go out and do a it? Little I don't have anyone going out there. But okay. I mean, I just I just now uh, brought on a guy who's starting to do that. Okay. And he's the one that brought me Kinsey. Okay. Yep. Um, which is crazy because I was scrolling through the internet and I ran into Kinsey. Yeah. I didn't even know who she was, but I thought, damn. She's got balls. And so I started looking at her page and I'm like, damn, like this freaking girl's a freak. And, and then next thing you know, he knows her. Yeah. And I said, no shit. And, and I said, see if she'll be in the show. And he goes, she'd love to be. I go, she knows it. She goes, yeah, she knows who you are. I'm like, cool. That's cool. So I got her coming. I'm excited. Um, but big names, uh, I, you know, hopefully this guy will start bringing some of some yeah. more bigger names, uh, only to raise the, 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 profile of yeah. the show yeah do you know nicole arbor yeah she's a comedian yeah i know uh, exactly she, she's been on the show yeah so she was just on this show uh, a couple weeks ago she came out to maui and filmed out there and uh we had this conversation about it's because it, she has a podcast and it's talking about it's really hard to outsource your networking and then, you know you met stetson here stetson's over there uh stetson is in charge of you know bringing guests and doing that but at the end of the day like people like the high level networking, I feel like I have to do it. And that's why I asked that question is like, is it something you can outsource? And I'd be curious to, you know, follow up with you in six months. To you see can how outsource. It's going. I, I believe you can outsource uh, if you're famous. Mm. Cause again, if everyone's heard of you, yeah. Stetson can do it. Yes. If no one's heard of you, yeah. it might not be Stetson that needs to do it. Yeah. But you know, like when it comes to me, not everyone's heard of me. I don't, I mean, yeah. people think I have a bunch of followers, but like in reality, I don't like, sure. there's not that many, a million on Instagram. Isn't that really, I mean, that's a lot, yeah. but it's not really that many. Yeah, is Kinsey's it? got like four or something She's like got that. Like, that. Yeah, yeah. She's going on four. <laughs> yeah. And dude, what does she do? Like, I don't even know what she does. Yeah. But, real, real estate investing. But look at, and again, world. like, again, we're not talking about real estate. I no. can care less. <laughs> but but uh, there's another girl that I'm trying to get. I don't know her name. I got to go look on Instagram. But she's a, I would say, martial artist. Okay. You know who I'm talking about? No. I'll show you after okay. the show. Okay. You're going to go, damn, like, yeah. dude, I just want to see her. Cause like, and all she does is post her doing martial arts, but mm. she's gorgeous. Number one. Yeah. Number two, like, you know, I haven't seen anything like that before. Yeah. Like, so I want to talk to her Yeah. and it's not because she's hot because again, like if, if Kinsey and Kinsey's hot too, um, a lot of these beautiful women, they can come on the show and it has no effect on me. Sure. Why? Well, cause I'm married. Yeah. Number one, number two, I wouldn't cheat on my wife no matter what mm. like it does you couldn't get me to yeah so it isn't because they're hot because i could care less about that it's because they're interesting yeah it's interesting to me um but no if you're famous like right now if someone called you and said hello i work for 
Jordan Peterson. Mm. He would like to have you on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, okay, Jordan Peterson. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You know, but if, if I didn't know who you were, I'd be like, you know, I wonder who now I, however, get the credit for being somewhat of a celebrity, but I don't fancy myself one. Yeah. So when someone calls me to be on their podcast, I usually just say, okay, if it seems to be a real podcast. Yeah. In a shady parking lot of a, <laughs> of a warehouse. Yeah, again, I mean, I don't know, I don't know how I looked at this one and said yes or no. It's probably <laughs> Stetson's closing ability. He's a, he's a closer right but, there. But I remember, I know I would not be here if, if you were a brand new beginning yeah. dude just yeah. wanting someone on your podcast. Yep. Normally, I'll say I'll be your 100th guest. Yep. Yeah, I've, I've said the same thing many times. Yeah, if, yeah I if, think, if it's your hundredth episode, I don't yep. really care if you're famous or not. You know, yep. everyone has to start somewhere. Yeah, you stuck with it a hundred times. You're my kind of person. Yeah, and so I'll do it. I'll do it. I do. It. I've done a lot of shows where, believe it or not, and it even freaks me out sometimes. I was the first real guest, and since I was on it, all these other people got on. Yeah, it. They, they they told me they said, dude, as soon as you did it, like yep. you know, Jordan Belfort did it, and I started getting all these people wanting to do it yeah. because you did it. And I said, really? They said, yeah, like like. They figured if you did it, it must be real. Yep. I'm like, yeah. well, I pre uh, cool. Yeah, to go back to the pain thing you said earlier, we were trying really hard, and we, we failed at it. We were trying to get Arnold Schwarzenegger for episode one when we launched this show. Uh, and I was like, I will pay any amount. Like, I would have paid a quarter million dollars to get Arnold to come. Uh, and I would fly to his living room. I would have set up he the said studio. No. We just couldn't even get through the layers I'll of, get you to Arnold. of people. You want me to get you to him or is it too late? Uh, it's not too late, but I, episode one is why I wanted to pay so much because I was like, that would have established this like, oh, yeah, you know, Brandon had a big show before. He left for a year and just landed Arnold for show one. Like, because Arnold like, doesn't do no, like, shows. No, like David Letterman's, um, you ever see that, that show he does called... Uh, I forget, but it's David Letterman. Yeah. So he's getting Beyonce yeah, yeah. and Jay-Z and all these top, 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 yeah. top people. Like, I always think, man, wouldn't that be cool just to be able to call and say, hey, I want to talk to you and they'll show up? Yeah. It'd be, it'd so, be amazing. So, so your last uh, podcast, yeah. what was it called? Called Bigger Pockets. Yeah, I think I was on that. Yeah, you might have been. Um, yeah. But it wasn't you. Yeah, I, I, yeah I, was there, I took a year off uh, and they got two new hosts now and... They're still killing it, but yeah, Good. it's still a big show. Good. So, so now this one is going to yeah. dominate. And this one's going to kill it. <laughs> What's this one about? Dude, this is about, it, it's funny, something you said earlier, and I was going to pounce on it, but we went past it, where you said, if you, if you define what you want and you look for someone who has that, and then you just do what they do, you're going to get the results of what they want. That was literally the pitch I had for this podcast was, let's just find cool people who have what people want and then ask them what they're doing. And then that way people know what to do. And so that literally was where the podcast was born, was that same kind of four-step framework. So Yeah, well, I think it's going to get much bigger than your last one. I hope so. I, I can tell you. I can promise you it will. Well, the traveling podcast thing, again, investing heavily in video, and I know you do a lot of video stuff. Like It, sure. it matters. Like social media, people well, care about the course. clips. Is there people out there thinking audio only is the answer? Yeah, I mean, I know some people have an audio only podcast, and I'm like, it takes almost no more effort to turn the video camera on and use that for social or, what, what's their excuse what do they say no uh a lot of them are they just don't care i just don't care about growth i just don't care about growth wow. uh, and i'm like no you're scared to turn the camera on yourself but it's uh, something yeah it's, it's not that I, I'm, I don't want to grow anymore yeah why yeah. do it then yeah why do it yeah what's the point uh, i think it's people uh, don't want to be on camera i think there's people just afraid of seen themselves yeah yeah i don't know man all right let's move on a little bit uh how do you see this is completely out of left field uh, from what we've been talking about who or what is god to you like where's your what's your faith like well i do believe that there is a god okay i guess if that's what you want to call sure. it because again the word god isn't necessarily uh his name, mm -hmm. uh, I, it's more of a title. Mm -hmm. So a, a, a supreme being, a higher power, you know, I believe there is. Why? Because mm -hmm. we're too flawless. Like, yeah. think about it, dude, you cut your arm, your body sends platelets mm -hmm. and heals. Yeah. And like, who thought of that? Yeah. You think that's accidental? No way. No way, dude. We were all once a, uh, an amoeba in some slime, and now there's giraffes and butterflies <laughs> and tigers and elephants and yeah. rhinos, and they all came from that little amoeba. Bullshit. Mm. No way. It can't be that uh, 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 easy. So I think there is one. Um, I don't think that we are flesh. 
I think that we are beings operating flesh. Mm. Does that make sense? Sure. So I do believe there's a higher power. I just don't know what it is or who it is. Yeah. And I'm ultimately seeking. I'm trying to find the answer. Yeah. Um, it's a very honest answer, man. Well, again, I mean, I, it's the only thing I can tell you. Yeah. Because, again, like, you know, I could sit there and try and cater to all the Christians in the world and be sure. like, yes, I totally believe Jesus is my Savior. Yeah. He's my Lord and Savior. Jesus, you've heard of him? I've heard of him. Well, his name's not Jesus, number one. Sure. His name was Yahshua. Yeah. But, you know, well, now it was translated. No, you're listening to bullshit. It wasn't translated, and it wasn't transliterated. It was changed. His name was changed. His name is Yahshua. So anyway, if you know him so well and you love him so much, why won't you, why won't you use his real name? Well, his name's Jesus to me. No, it isn't. It's Yahshua. Go look. Go investigate. Go seek, and you'll realize his name was Yahshua. Why are we calling him Jesus? Why do you think? Because someone changed his name. That goes easier to say, maybe? Well, again, I mean, the story goes that they were trying to change it into Greek and, you know, to make them understand, which is transliteration, they changed it a little bit so they'd understand. Mm. Okay, I hear you, mm. but why'd you change it? Well, so they'd understand. Who are you to change his name? Mm. If that's truly God, who are you to change his name? Don't change his name, especially when it says in one of the commandments, don't take my name in vain. Well, what's vain mean? It means to make meaningless and useless. Doesn't, if I say God, damn it, yeah. that's not taking his name in vain. Number one, God's not his name. Yep. Number two, uh, that's not what it means. It means don't make it meaningless or useless. Yep. Agreed. So how much more meaningless and useless can you make a name and by not it. using it? Mm. Like we're not going to use his actual name. Yeah. Dude, he just said don't do that. Don't take my name in vain means don't make it meaningless, don't make it useless. And you're telling everyone, stop using it. Stop, stop, stop saying it. Mm. Say this instead. Well, I think, again, if you believe in God, then you believe in the devil. And so when people say, who did it? I think the devil did it. Interesting. I think Satan did it. He just got you to accidentally, not intentionally, stop using his name. And if you look at the scripture, there's a lot of them that talk about give power to his name and, and praise his name and, you know, thank his name and call upon his name. It's all about his name. So what is his name? And by the way, Jesus isn't God either, in my opinion. Now, people will argue that. Well, sure. why? Well, if you ask me, he was on the cross. He looked up and he said, why hast thou forsaken me? me? According to the story. Sure. If that's true, who is he talking to? Himself? Would you have to ask yourself why you just did something? Yeah. I Would mean, you? Yeah, no. Would you have to ask yourself why you just did something? No. You know, like, you know, we've done it before, though. Yeah. I smoked a bowl before, got stoned, and then I don't, I'm like, why the fuck did I do that? Right? But it's more rhetorical. Sure. I'm an idiot. I shouldn't have got stoned. But when I ask myself, why did I get stoned? I'm not asking somebody else. Yeah. Why? Because we wouldn't ask ourselves that. Sure. So when he said, why has thou forsaken me? He's talking to the big man. Sure. The one who raised him. If that story's true, there's a God, and yep. then there's Yahshua. Yeah. Who has been appointed as our, you know, we ain't going to him without going to him, according to that story. But again, there's Jews in this world. There's one right there. There's Jewish folks. They don't buy that at all. Sure. Well, who's right and who's wrong? I don't know, man. I'm trying to find the answers. Sure. So I've listened to Judaism. I've listened to Buddhism. And I've listened to, you know, Muslims. You know, I've read the Quran. I've read the Bible. I'm reading things. I'm seeking. So sure. that's my answer. I don't know. That's a good answer. But I know there's something. Yeah. I do know that. And I ultimately believe, just inherently, that there's truth in all of them. Yeah. So there's truth in all of them. I agree. Yeah, Muslims 100%. aren't wrong. Yep. Jews aren't wrong. Christians aren't wrong. I think there's truth in every single one of them sure. that's splintered from the truth. So I think we were so far removed from the truth that all these people are fighting and arguing over, over what's real. Yeah. And what's real is the truth. Sure. And that's the only thing real. And the rest of it is someone's version of the truth. And it's, and it's caused all this, you know. Yeah, there's a great phrase I've heard. It says, all truth is God's truth. And I like that phrase, meaning like, if Muslims believe that it's wrong to murder, 
that's then that's that's God's truth. It doesn't matter if a Muslim believes it or a Buddhist believes it or a Christian believes it. Truth is is higher than the religious belief of it. Uh, it doesn't mean that every single thing a religion believes is necessarily true because there's you know crazy beliefs out there in pretty much every religion. But if well, it's true, that's God's truth. And then you can say, is that God? Is God just the religion is man made? Yes, agreed. Yeah, really. Did they say religion is our attempt to try to you know, reach to God yeah. versus the relationship of God reaching to us, which is more of a spirituality, I guess yeah. you could define it as, you know, and, and I like to hedge my bets, you know mm. what I'm saying? So like, for example, when I was a kid, I would go into the little, uh, church booth at the county fair sure. and take Jesus into my heart as my Lord and savior. Sure. And according to the scripture, according to the story, yeah. if I do that, he will never leave. Sure. That's what I've been told. Have you ever been told that? I have. I'm a, I'm a Christian dude. Okay, so have you yep. ever been told that? Uh, if you accept yes. him as your Lord and Savior, he will never leave. I've been told that. I don't know if I believe that's that. That's what he says. Well, again, you got to choose what you believe, I guess. But yeah. if that's the truth, well, then I'm good. Yeah. There's like, you know, if you believe on the Lord, you'll be saved. Well, what does that mean to believe on the Lord? doesn't mean necessarily believe in the Lord. Believe on the Lord. Also, the, the, the scripture a, also says, thou shalt not judge, but yet we all do. Yeah. We all judge all the time so yeah well it says really if you really believed don't do what he's saying not to do so Mm -hmm. do you really believe because if you really believed and he said don't judge what are you doing judging yeah well you know we all fall short no that's an excuse Mm. it's an excuse because we all do fall short well isn't that the whole story yeah we're all so terrible and bad and will never be good that god gave his only begotten son to clear us of all the sins so we could be with him again wonderful Love that story. Yeah. Is it true? Don't know yet. Yeah. Do you have faith? Eh, I, I do have faith. Like if I died right now and someone had, I had to pick, I'd pick that one. Sure. I'd, I'd pick Jesus if I died <laughs> right now. Well, and part of that is because have you heard of Pascal's Wager? Uh, it's this idea. Uh, I heard actually about this with global warming, but this idea of, okay, let's say, and I know people can't necessarily say that I'm drawing here, but imagine there's four boxes. I saw this again for global warming, but it applies to Jesus. And you say there's two possibilities that exist. Global warming is true or it's not true. And then you have two options on the left side here. You can do something about it or you can not do something about it. Those are the only four options that really exist. It's true or not true. You can do something or not do, do something. And they said, okay, well, if global warming is true and you do something about it, great, we save the world. If global warming is not true and you do something about it, well, who cares? We still have, you know, we're healthy. We have a healthy earth, even though it wasn't going to be destroyed anyway. But if global warming is true and we don't do anything, the world just dies. And if it's not true and we do nothing, well, nothing happens. So in other words, there's only one possibility in four that the world completely implodes. And that is if we just don't do anything about it. So the argument is we should pretend that global warming exists and do something about it, even if it doesn't, because it's better than nothing else. That same argument is what Pascal's wager is about God. In other words, Hedging your bet. You're hedging your bet, right? If, and I'm not saying this is why I believe in Jesus and God. That, but that, I will right? say it. that is a big reason why yeah. I do because it'd be stupid not to. Yeah. Because it's real yeah, if and it's, you're wrong, exactly. you're done. You're done. Yep. If it's wrong and it's, and it's not real and you believe it, there's nothing. Yep. There's nothing. There's nothing. Yeah. But if, if it is true and you, Christianity is the only religion that, I mean, really it's the only religion that has a really bad option if you're wrong, right? Like everything, every other religion, generally speaking, is either a nihil, either there is no afterlife or it's a nihil, a nihilism, a nihilist. Wait, you just di- like disappear. What's the word I'm looking for? Not what? Nihilism. Like nihilism, there's nothing else, there's nothing there. But then there's like the, uh, 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 yeah, you're, it's over. But Christianity, if you're, if you're wrong, it's like, okay, well, there's hell for eternity. Well, that sucks. So again, I don't, I well, never well, want to convince somebody to believe in Jesus. Because I know, but I also believe that your pe- bets. people's description of hell has, has been agreed. It, it has altered and changed. We don't know what's coming. in a lake of fire forever. Yeah, you may not. And I, I don't think you will, but I, I think hedging I think, bets, <laughs> I think quote unquote, hell would be not living with God. Once you realize he did exist and you could have been there, but you are, you can't be because you didn't. Yeah. And it and says that, that it, it, that it's is the hell. absence. It's the absence of God. And that so, would be hell, but yeah. it's not burning. And, and because again, dude, think about it. If you had children mm-hmm. and you said, Hey guys, clean your room. Yeah. And they didn't clean their room and they didn't clean their room and they didn't yep. clean the room. And then do you want, you want to have them burn in hell? Mm. Not at all. If you love them. Yeah. Not doesn't at all. he love us? Yep. Why would he want us to burn in hell? Yeah. Meaning pain and suffering for life forever. Well, yeah. 
You wouldn't. You wouldn't. Now again, if God is real, I do not believe that he wants us to burn in hell yeah. because we didn't choose him. Especially, how would we know to choose him? Where's the evidence of him? People are like, well, what do you mean? Well, dude, why doesn't he just open up the sky and say, hey, dumb fucks, I exist. <laughs> mm. Well, he wants you to give, give, give you free, free will and free choice so you go to him on your own. Well, then who's influencing me? Who's telling me the stories? What if, what if there's somebody out in the middle of nowhere that's never heard the story? They yeah. go to hell? And God loves us all? No. Mm. God is not going to do that to us. I don't care what anyone on earth tells me. Yeah. You know, the pastor tells you, oh, you better go or you're going to go to hell. That's your version. I don't really believe that. Yeah. If, if, that's, if that's the truth, dude, we're in some big trouble, most of us. There's a great quote from C.S. Lewis. He says, uh, if hell is locked, it's locked from the inside. And I really like that quote. If hell exists in the way that most Christians believe, that it's a fiery lake of hell, C.S. Lewis says, if, if that is true and it's locked and you can't get out, it's, it's only locked because they locked it on the inside and they won't come out. And I think it's an interesting perspective of, of it kind of reconciles those two thoughts in my head of, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that's true necessarily, but I like that thought of if, if, if hell is eternal fire, they're choosing to stay there. And why they would do that, I have no idea. Uh, and I'm okay, with, I'm okay with the unknowns. Like Jesus, God, Holy Spirit, how does the Trinity work? I have no idea. Well, I believe I'm more loved than anyone mm. from God. Mm -hmm. Or maybe equally, but sure. maybe not more. But I do believe I'm, like most people get an angel to protect them. I was assigned four, minima. Because mm. like, dude, I'm the luckiest guy on the planet. Yeah, I'm literally so lucky, it's unbelievable. I am blessed beyond the normal person yeah and why is that well I don't know why is that but if you believe in God well I would say that he maybe he favors me more I don't know yeah well, what does that mean Brad you think you're something no I say that like the scripture says you'll know his children by their fruits mm. maybe he's calling you in man but look at my fruits maybe he's, maybe he's pulling you in with uh, with goodies but again look at my <laughs> fruits yeah what are my fruits Beautiful children, beautiful yeah. business, beautiful health, beautiful, yeah. beautiful life. We're, you know, we're lucky. Yeah. We're, we're, and by the way, this is abundance thinking. Yeah. Um, I'm just using that in the religious realm sure. where I must be blessed. Mm -hmm. And if I am blessed, why isn't everybody? Yeah. Well, God works in mysterious ways. Quit saying that shit. You just don't have the answer. Why don't you say, I don't know? Mm. Because the truth is, we don't know. We and don't when know. you say, what do you think? I don't know. That's the truth. I don't know. Yep. What do I want to believe? I want to believe that there's a God, and when we die, we float around heaven, sure. and everybody's magical, and there's no pain and suffering, and I'll see all the people that I miss and love, yep. and yak, yak, yak. What's, what's uh, real? I don't know. I don't think anyone does. No, I, I agree. And so, yeah, like you, I'm like, okay, I don't know. I don't know what, I don't understand the hell. I don't understand the Trinity. I don't understand any of that stuff. But I like this. And I, so I'm going to, I'm just going to, it's kind of like this. What's the best, what's the best business to start? I'm like, I don't know. What's the best real estate to buy? I don't know. I'm going to pick that one and I'm going to go all in. I'm like, I'm just going to be the best at that thing. So and I'm like, what's the worst that can happen if you're wrong? Yeah, exactly. I'm like, I'm going to go all in on Jesus because I'm like, I like that one. I feel like I've been, uh, it's been confirmed, you know, like, and you know, you can say, oh, those are coincidences. Maybe, maybe not, but it sure feels like I've been blessed. And the more that I'm in it, the more that I believe it could be but placebo. It too. could be placebo. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. And at the end of my, at the end of the end of life, we're going to figure it out or I'm not going to figure it out. And either way, I'm in a good spot. Is, uh, well, I have a feeling that, 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 that it's true. Yeah. My intuition tells me yeah. it's true. When you die, your energy, your spirit, yeah. your being does not die. Yeah. Your body does. Yes. And once your body goes, where does your spirit go? Where does your, where does your energy go? I don't think it goes uh, to a learn burning lake of hell. I think it goes somewhere else. Yeah. And whether or not you have a memory, I don't know. Because how do you explain reincarnation? How do you explain people that like are six year old kids and they remember being a, a fighter pilot and you know all the evidence points out that that kid must have been that person mm. in a past life? Do you believe in past lives? I don't. Reincarnation. Go I don't, but I don't it. think you'll it's... go. Wow, like that's hard to explain. Yeah. Exactly. Like yeah. I don't know. Yeah. How do you explain to a Jewish guy that they're wrong? 
how do you explain to a Muslim that they're wrong? Yeah. That's why when people say, ultimately, I joke around with it, but they say, what, what religion are you? I say I'm a Krishuslam <laughs> Jew. I'm a Krishuslam Jew. There you go. Jew. And you're such I, mean? I believe in all of them. Yeah. And I have read the Quran. Let me tell you something, dude. There's some good stuff in there's the Quran. There's great stuff. And there's some good stuff in the Torah. But there's also a missing chapter in the Torah that Jewish people are not allowed to look at. And I don't like that. Why? Well, why would you hide a chapter? Why would you hide a book? Mm. And by the way, the ones that do read it end up becoming what they call, you know, Jews for Jesus, meaning mm. they go towards Jesus a lot of them that read that book. So why'd you, why'd you leave it out? I don't understand. And then when you start really looking, the Bible, King James, whatever version, most of them are changed. Sure. And they're omitted, uh, or there's omissions. And it's like the King James version. Why does he get his own version? Well, because he's the king. That's his version. Version of what? The truth. Mm. Exactly. So now I'm starting to think, okay, so these Bibles are really just, you know, Time's attempt to tell us the, 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 the facts. Yeah. And they've got to be, uh, you know, manipulated by man over the years. So when I read them, I read them like that. Like, not, no, not so sure that that's the truth just because this old pastor, who's humping little kids, by the way, is telling me that it's the truth. See what I'm saying? Yeah, I like, dude, it. you're going you're gonna to let a dude that, that, that humps little boys tell me that I can't do these things because this book says so, how come he ain't following it? And more mm. importantly, when, when you find out he ain't following it, why are you moving him to a different church? Yeah. Why wouldn't he be out? How could you let that happen? Yeah. There's so again, it makes, corruption it makes me question yeah. people are like, well, that's Catholic church. No, it's no. a lot no, more than lot, just Catholic yeah. churches. They're just the more famous ones of doing sure. it. It happens in all the churches, yep. I would think. Yeah. So again, what do I believe? I don't know. I don't know. I like the honesty, man. That's good. It's a good talk. All right, man. We're going to start moving towards the end. First of all, every episode we throw in an ad. And one thing we do on the show is all the ad revenue, 100% of this ad uh, revenue from the show go toward a charity of your choice. So where are we uh, throwing all the money from this episode? The toward? Bradley Foundation. Hey, sorry to interrupt this amazing podcast, if I do say so myself, to bring you an ad. And you know what? You might be tempted to skip through this ad to get back to the conversation, and I wouldn't blame you. It is that good. But then you would miss out on the free gift I'm going to give you. So hold on a sec. I wrote an ebook that I never officially published. It's called How the Rich Legally Pay No Taxes. And it's basically a walkthrough of how depreciation works for real estate investors and for people who uh, are not real estate investors and how you can use the same strategies that I do to pay really nothing in federal income tax. This stuff can even work as a passive investor into syndications. Many of my nearly 2,000 investors at Open Door Capital are actually offsetting some of their income with these strategies. So get the guide today. You'll read it in under 30 minutes, and it could help you save millions over your lifetime. Get it at odcfund.com forward slash tax book. I'm a good steward of, of Yeah, will you give it to somebody good? Well, hopefully it's, it's, it's substantial. I can give it to a whole bunch of people. Well, it depends on how big this show goes. But in reality, <laughs> you know, anything that has to do with abused children. Okay, yeah. Because that's, yeah. like when someone says, Brad, who would you help? I would help the abused children, these trafficked children, yep. these, the, the Sound of Freedom. Everybody yep. needs to go watch that movie, yeah. you know, with an open mind. How are millions of kids disappearing and nobody cares? Nobody cares. And nobody wants to ha demand answers. And when in reality, America is one of the biggest uh, yeah. buyers uh -huh. of them. What? Yeah. Like, come on, man. These are, these are kids, dude. Yeah. I want to help little children that can't help themselves. I believe children, number one, women, second. Why women? Because, again, I mean, to me, women are, are you know, there's some of them, they'll kick your ass. But most of yeah. them, they, I think a man's job is to provide and protect. Yep. So I, t I, I got a video that went pretty viral when I said, if your girl outspends your income, you need to make more money. Mm. And there was guys that had a problem with that. It's like. Dude, just admit you don't know how to make more money. Don't, <laughs> don't be mad because the answer is you should be making more money. Yeah. Like my wife doesn't have a budget. She can spend whatever she wants to spend. Why? Because we're one and that's her money too. Yep. And if, and if she's outspending me, I need to go make more money. Oh, that's a simp. That's a bitch move. That's, a, this. Mm. that's just my opinion. I think the man should provide and protect yeah. women and children. Now, out of the two, children. Someone asked me earlier, if you had to pick someone to die, your wife or oh, your geez. children, mm. who would you pick? And I said, my wife. 
They're like, oh, yeah, what if she watches this? It's the truth. And that's what she'd want to. I guarantee yeah. you, dude, listen, if, I, if my wife, and I hope she loves me, but, and why I say hope, I, I don't know she does, because mm. I'm not an idiot, dude. There could be freaking neighbors banging your wife and you don't even know it. <laughs> but, but at the end of the day, if, if, if I asked my wife, and, and she, told, she had to tell the truth, if your children, if her children must die or her husband must die, mm -hmm. I promise you her answer would be my husband. Of course. Yeah. Okay. So I just tell the truth. I, yep. My wife would die if I yep. had to choose. Yeah. Thank God I don't have to yeah, choose. Yeah. Just because we don't like something doesn't mean it's not true. Yeah. Thank God <laughs> yeah. I don't have to choose. But I don't know where I was going with that. Yeah. But it's human the, trafficking. It's the truth. But well, that's why yeah. if that money needs to go to help people yeah. and it really does go to help people. Because yeah. a lot of these charities, they're not helping anybody. Yeah. No. You, you know when you go to the store and you swipe your card and it says, "Hey, you want to give round ten dollars to do this?" I never do. Well, I always do. Do you? I don't, yeah, because I, I, I never do because I, I always assume they're just going to take that money and some rich CEO yeah, well, going to get money again. Maybe. maybe I always wonder too. Like, does the store even give it to anybody? I wonder. Just collect it. Yep, I have no. But idea. But I always give it because you know there's an abundance of money and okay. you know I have no shortage, so yeah. why would I not mm. give? Um, and maybe that's why I have. Maybe I 100 percent believe that. Like. The most generous people I know just get richer and richer. I had, I had a couple of people see me give a hundred dollars to a bum and people are like, you know, you don't call them bums. You know, you know what I'm talking sure, about? Yeah, Homeless yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah. And I give them a hundred dollars and then one will ask and I'll say no. And then one will ask, I'll say no. Then one will ask, I'll be like, yeah, here you go. hundred bucks. I had a buddy one mine time say, dude, how, how do you choose who to give it to? And I said, and I meant to him, I'm not the one choosing. Yeah. He goes, what do you mean? I go, dude, something tells me yep. when to do it and when not to do it. And I think yeah, that's God. That's the higher power. Like God wanted me to give that hundred dollars. I didn't give a hundred dollars. God gave a hundred dollars. And it's weird, but that's just what I believe. Cause sometimes I feel like giving and sometimes I say no. Yeah. Well, I don't know why I don't, I mean, there's no difference, yep. but it, to me, I'm not the one giving the money. So to answer your question, I would give it to somebody that helps abused and traffic, not yeah. both, but one sure. or the other children yeah and if they truly help people i would want you to give it all to them if they don't truly help people i'd want you to give it to me mm, so I, I can use it yeah well, dude, <laughs> let, let me, let i'll me use it let me tell you i i i, I love that you said this because uh, you wouldn't have known this going into this so when i launched the podcast at the same time we launched a mastermind tribe whatever we want to call it it's called the better life tribe uh, we have a thousand members in there right now paying 300 dollars a month roughly a uh, hundred percent of that goes towards the fight against human trafficking. We're going to grow it to 10,000 people over the next three years. That's $60 million a year in top line. Uh, we'll give away, you know, well, you know, we'll spend 10 probably in operations. We're going to give away $50 million. I don't take a salary. Like this whole thing, everything we're doing here is all for human trafficking. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's cool that you said that. It's a very, uh, well, not good. coincidence, but, uh, Dude, somebody needs to help those people. Yeah. I'm like, here's what I think we need to do. Like, and by the I'm, way, I, you know, I yeah. don't think it takes billions of dollars. No. I think it takes some fucking accountability uh -huh. and some common sense and uh -huh. a little bit of money. Yes, I agree. But what I, my, my biggest like passion went forward, again, I got lots of real estate, lots of wealth, whatever. But it's like, how do we get entrepreneurs, guys that know how to build businesses like you, like me, how do we get us making money for the charity? Because charities suck at making money. They're really bad at it. They just live on donations. So anyway, the big thing, I'm like, how do we build more things like this, the Better Life Tribe? How do we make it? How do we make a business that can make 50 or $100 million a year and then give that away to charity? So anyway, that's where my, my heart has been. So it's only 300 a month to be part of your deal. Why don't you initiate um, uh, $300 a month as membership and $300 a month donation? That's not a bad idea. We should, we should, we should probably do that. Anybody they, paying you 300 a month, I yeah, guarantee they can afford you would six. not have yep. a problem giving you 300 bucks if they knew it's going yeah. to help kids. 100%. And if, and if they do, yep. kick them the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Well, because, dude, in my opinion, yeah. if you ain't down with that, that's because you're fucking them too, you little yeah. fucking weirdo. <laughs> dude, uh, that's actually good. I mean, it goes with what you said earlier, but just double your like double your price. Like, if we're like, okay, you can give three hundred, give six hundred. You know, man. Dude, first of all, three hundred a month is chump change. It is for, for a for a mastermind. Correct. Are you kidding me? Yeah, it's it's it, we meant to make it low price because I wanted to go wide versus deep. If we you, have a deep version. We'll have eventually. But if again, you all just, that. if you just sent out something that said, hey. We're gonna we're gonna institute a new three hundred dollar a month donation yeah. for three hundred. So we're gonna match your membership yeah. fee. Now three hundred dollars you must donate to be a member because if you're if you're not willing to donate, dude, yeah, are they really the tribe? Yeah, are That's they or not? Boy. Great question, dude. If I had a tribe of people and I, and you, I found out you wouldn't donate, dude, yeah. you ain't my yeah, tribe. you ain't my tribe. You're not my people. So.
go find yeah. your own tribe. Do that My too. tribe donates, and it's three hundred dollars. It's nothing. Yeah, yeah. So it's almost a gesture. Yep. And and you would instantly have that much more money to help. Yeah. Which is if it's all going there, then why not? Yeah. And I and I again, I mean, to me, uh, how long are you in town? Uh, till Friday ish. Why don't you come do my podcast and let's just get a whole bunch of people in in my listener yeah. base into your tribe? I'm down. Because like that's a freaking e- you're you're not you're not vetting people. Yeah, at yeah. Three hundred a month. Correct. You? Yeah. It's not. It's we're gonna have a higher tier right now. It's anybody can come in at the lower tier and then we'll have a we'll have a higher tier eventually. Yeah. And it's all gonna go to charity. See, well, that's how I can help you. You yeah. know, f- make like more that, money man. for for kids as cool, long man. as it's going to kids. Yeah. Yeah, if you give $50 million to a company that gives 5% towards kids correct, yeah. and 95% towards the crew that's doing it, yeah. I don't dig that at yeah. all. Again, yeah. I mean, like, you know, people talk about Tim Ballard. Yeah. You know, he's a great guy and he does all this. I've never met him. I hope he's a great guy. Yeah. But I too. always think to myself, like, you know, it, 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 and, and not to use Tim Ballard as a don't question him because yeah. from what I hear, he's a great guy. Yeah. All my friends, I'm yeah. just using him because he's a known individual yeah. in, the, in, the, in the news right now in the scene. Movie. Yeah. Well, again, I mean, he's out there helping doing it yeah so so if i found out for example he got you know 100 million dollars to help kids and he had a 92 million dollar estate mm. yeah dude let's just help the kids yeah for no fucking gain yeah. other than helping kids how yeah. about that yeah i love that yeah do you know uh charity water you heard of that organization no. they're a, they're a huge organization that builds, that builds wells and they build tens of thousands of wells over in foreign you know countries like uh, third world countries but what they do is super interesting with the with the fundraising they have two sides he raises all the operational capital from entrepreneurs like you and i who understand it takes money to build a company and or you know to to it takes money to have operations and then a hundred percent of all donations that they raise goes directly toward the wells. And I think that's a cool model where like, it's not a, it's not a 90% or 80%, it's a hundred percent of money. So uh, we're looking at that model thinking like, how do we do more of that? Like how do, when you give, you donate $300 a month for your membership into this thing, how do you know that that $300 is directly saving somebody's life? Like a woman or child from slavery. And so, well again, for about, me though, yeah. that's nice and all that, Yeah. but for me, until I stop child trafficking, yeah. I ain't worried about wells. Mm, yeah. I'm worried about child sure. trafficking. Yeah, and that's why, that's why we chose that one. As we said, this is the one that... I mean, think about it, yeah. dude. You're 11 years old. Yep. Freaking somebody snatched you somehow. Mm, yeah. And now you're being physically, mentally, yep. emotionally abused yep. every day, yep. 10, 15 times a day, yeah. only to end up fucking meat. Yeah. Because from what I hear, I haven't seen the movie yet. I'm going to see that movie. Yeah. But from what I hear a lot of them end up just getting killed yeah and then they're sold their livers and their hearts and mm. they're now they're uh, uh body organ tra- yeah. uh donors yeah it's nasty so business. they're they're literally like my god dude yeah. i can't even believe we live in a world that would allow that anyone could even do that yeah that's yeah. why i say if you're not down to help that yeah i would like raise an eyebrow like yeah. what are you doing my man yeah. anybody that says oh that's just QAnon conspiracy theory what are you doing Mm. That's what I want to know. Yeah. Because don't you think automatically that yeah. they, must, they must be into it? Yeah. There's been a ton of like negative press about, not negative press, but we are like, yeah, uh, against the movie, the, the Sound of Freedom, right? Like there's a lot of, especially. Do the, you know what that is? Yeah. Oh, the, like why the well, media yeah. is so against it? That's the mainstream That's media. That's the question. They're why the, are they against it? That's well, because I think they're into it. Yeah. According to Hollywood. Yeah. You know, Hollywood, mainstream media, pretty much the same thing. They're all owned by the same companies. Mm. They're into it. Mm. In other words, you, you, you stop their, their, their trafficking, you're, yeah. you're, you're affecting their entertainment. Like, I think they're involved. Mm. You, th- you think there's nobody powerful involved? Impossible. How yeah. are they getting yeah. through the borders? How are they getting through? Because they're being allowed. Yeah. It's, a, it's a machine, it's money. And I'm telling you right now, I just like Jeffrey Epstein's list. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't where that go. Yeah. Well, I want to know. I want to yeah. know who voted to keep it sealed. Uh huh. They are gone instantly. Why? Why the fuck would you keep that sealed? Yeah. Number one. And who the fuck are you to determine for the whole world that whether we get to see that list or not? Yep. Let that list go. Yep. Do you know why they don't let that list go? Because just... because the names on that list sure. would literally cause society to crumble yeah the trust would be gone in governments 100 in, in, in everything in theaters and movies the richest people in the world would crash and the richest people in the world are not going to allow that which is why it's not being released why because the 
top fucking people in the world are on that goddamn list. Yeah. And I think it needs to be released. And I think if we have to go backwards, so be it. Go yeah. backwards. Yeah. Let's, let's go backwards a little bit and move forwards better off. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's improve the world and stopping trafficking. And when they say human trafficking, look, I understand that there's, you know, adults, sure. unfortunately, being trafficked too. Let's start with the children. Yeah. Like, let's help them. Yep. Because to me, if I'm being trafficked as a full grown human adult, you know, I, and, and again, I'm going to get a bunch of shit for this if you, if you put this in the wrong light. <laughs> I get, you got to gotta hear the whole thing. Yes. The adults that are being trafficked, I do feel bad for. I will help them, but yeah. I, I want to help the kids first. I agree. And until they're getting, until we stop that, like, I'm not worried about adults. Yeah. Like, kids, yeah. women. Well, adults, just go, girls. adults, like, listen, yeah. fight. Yeah. Stand up for yourself. Say no. Run away. You know, like, dude, like, yeah. you get, are, can you be trafficked? No. No. And again, if there's guns and chains involved well, and, like, literally yeah. traffic, traffic. Sure. Well, this is why it gets, it gets so complex, too, is because a lot, I mean, then drugs, get, a lot of it's drugs. A lot of the trafficked people don't know they're being trafficked. They go back to it. A lot of them, right. like, they're men, and, like, and to me, that's not necessarily trafficked. Yeah, it's, it gets really complex, really muddy very quick. But like, the kids, we can all agree on that. It's like, that is bad. Let's, let's stop that. Like, like Andrew Tate, yeah. he says he's being charged with trafficking. Yeah. It makes people think yep. you're, buy, you're buying and selling people. But when you start to read some of the court case, it's actually um, not what we think it is. Yeah. It's they think that he's using the lover boy technique, which means you're being really sweet to somebody mm. and causing them by using your sweetness to go do something that benefits you. Well, again, you, you got everybody thinking when you say human trafficking that he's buying and selling people. Yeah. According to their, their findings, that's not necessarily human trafficking. Human trafficking could be you're really, really nice to somebody and you're causing them to go do this and then give you the money, mm -hmm. which is not very ethical either, but not human trafficking. Yeah. So just be careful what you listen to in the mainstream media. Yeah. You know, be be willing to question things um, and go see the sound of freedom. Yeah, man. I'm going to see it. All right, man. A couple more quick segments. A few more questions. We'll get you out of here. First of all, I call this the three to one pivot. What are three books that have pivoted your life? In other words, like made an impact on you well i mean again i could say the torah the quran and the bible but um you know i think that would be cliche i would say um from just books people should go get i think the number one book is the four agreements mm, yeah uh don miguel Ru yep. ruiz as a man thinketh mm, so good um and there's a bunch of them but those two for sure yeah and then I think how to win friends and influence people. Yeah. Believe it or not. It's an oldie but a goodie. Yeah. And, and, it, and it ultimately teaches you how to build, connect, and nurture relationships. And I know that the whole thing is about relationships. The whole thing is about relationships. Yeah. Like you need more relationships. If you don't have everything you want in life, nine times out of ten, it's because you don't know the right people. So yeah. if you just knew the right people, you'd have everything you wanted and you don't. So what does that mean? I don't know the right people. Okay. So who are the right people and how do you start to meet them and, and yep. hang around them and, and get them to know you more importantly? So to me, how to win friends and influence people will, will give you the, the fundamentals to, to start building relationships, which is ultimately the answer to all your problems. Yeah. Relationships. People. Totally agreed. Yeah. That book made it impact on my life too. What about people? Uh, who are two people in your life that have made a pivot in your life, made you change your life? You know, again, I mean, my wife, yeah. my ex-wife, like, right, yeah. um, you know, people that you would consider, oh, though, well, those guys are losers. Well, yeah. again, them being losers changed my life because I could have been a loser just like them. Mm. Um, you know, my dad, you know, family, uh, friends, clients, Grant Cardone's mm. changed, you know, Tony Robbins, of yeah. course, um, you know, Don Miguel Ruiz, mm. you know, uh, George Clausen, like, you know, yeah. Yeah, these, richest these, man in Babylon. Yeah, yeah, I mean, all these people yeah. changed my life. Yeah. So when you say name a few, I don't. Yeah. I mean, are you looking for someone to be like, man, this guy changed my life? I think they all did. Yeah. I think my life. And by the way, my life changes daily. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a straight shot. It's a constant thing. I mean, think about it. We yeah. literally day. change daily. Every day. Every day. So again, who changed your life today? 
Mm. And if you're like, really nobody, I would say that you haven't thought about it enough then because somebody has, somebody will change your life every day, even if it's you. Brad, okay. you, ch you changed my life today. Thank you. <laughs> and by the way, I would like to answer the one person that's changed my life the most okay. is me. Mm. I love that. Well, I am. Yeah. Because again, I mean, you can tell me all kinds of shit. If I don't do anything with it, yep. if I don't do anything about it, then, yeah. then you didn't do shit. Yeah. Because people call me sometimes, not call me, but they reach out to yeah. me and they tell me they changed their life. And they're being sincere. And some of them sometimes sure. in person. Yeah. And their lips are quivering. Yeah. Like, dude, they're serious when yeah. they're saying this. Like, they really think I changed their yeah. life. And, and again, I like to take the compliments so they feel better. And I say, oh, thank you very much and all that. But in reality, I want to argue with them. Yeah. Because did I... Or did you? Yeah. Because the answer is you did. You changed your life. I might have helped you. Yep. I might have inspired you. Yeah. But I didn't do shit. Yeah. You did. And that's the problem with most people's lives. They don't value themselves. They changed their fucking life and they yeah. think I did. Yep. Yeah, the fact is 99% of people who listen to you probably didn't take that advice and go run with it and do the thing, which means it wasn't the advice that changes lives. It's the person's reaction to the advice that changes their life. 100%, which yeah. means you, I technically can't change your life. You can. I can just cause you to change your life, yeah. which, again, I think that's ultimately what they're saying is, yeah. hey, thank you. You did something that made me better. Yeah. Well, good. I take that compliment, and I take that. But in reality, mm -hmm. you did it. Yeah. You changed your life. Now, people can say, Brad, that's just you being humble. No, it's what I truly believe. Yep. You, you can't, you, you can't necessarily change my life unless you like shoot me in the head. You yeah. know, you stopped my life. You didn't, well, I guess you changed it, but yeah. you see my point. In yep, other words, 100%. a lot of people, when they say you changed my life because you did this, that, and the other thing, I think that inspired or caused, I don't think it actually did. You did, yep. you changed your life. Yeah. So anybody that wants to give me credit for changing their life again, know that I'll take it. I'll say, Oh, thank you very yep. much. But in reality, Dude, I want you to go look in the mirror and ask yourself, did I actually change it or did you actually change it? And the answer is you. And then that hopefully will bring up your self-worth. Yeah. Because if I could get everybody in the world just to love themselves, this world would instantly be a better place. Mm. A lot of the problems we have are because people don't value themselves, they don't love themselves, they don't like themselves. They're insecure, they're jealous, their, their emotions are down here, yep. their frequencies are low. And, you know, my boy Wes Watson, you know, your, your, your frequency yeah. is what you frequently see. Yep. So if you're constantly hanging around negative drug dealing losers, more than likely that's your frequency. Yeah. And you're wondering how to get out of it, stop hanging around a bunch of dipshits. Yeah. Well, these guys I grew up with, are you, are you telling me I shouldn't hang around my lifelong friends? Those aren't your fucking friends, bro. Mm -hmm. How would your friend be keeping you down yeah. your actual friend would not be doing that an actual friend wants to see you grow and succeed they would be telling you to put the weed down not smoking it with you yeah yeah so good man i understand why your podcast is called dropping bombs <laughs> you're, you're, you're man so are you gonna, are you gonna come on i am good. i'm gonna come on uh we'll talk uh, logistics later i love it uh okay a couple quick ones what have you done in the last year that's given you a better life what have you been doing that's improving your life right now um you know uh Every day I wake up with a, with a thing I call the million dollar morning. Okay. And the million dollar morning is because I've realized a long time ago that gratitude is a big factor in, I think, success and abundance and all this. So I had to trick myself in the beginning, but I realized that your, your you know, morning is crucial. Yeah. And the first thing you do when you wake up kind of matters. So the first thing I do when I wake up is realize how valuable the fact that I woke up is. Yeah. And when people are like, what do you mean by that? Well, like, for example, if I gave you $10 million cash, people would freak out about that. They'd be in a great mood. They'd be running around, hooting and hollering, celebrating, partying, like, yeah, excited. Yeah. But if I said, I'll give you the 10 million, but you can't wake up tomorrow. Well, then they wouldn't take it, obviously. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, because they'd want, they want to wake up. Okay, so you're acknowledging that waking up is worth more than $10 yeah. million dollars to you. And people are like, well, yeah, of course it is. Well, then why aren't you acting the same every fucking day? Why don't you wake up with the same enthusiasm you would have if I handed you $10 million? Yeah. It's a good think about question. That. So, again, that's gratitude. So if you can think like that, 
number one, step one. That's the million dollar morning. Yep. Number two, there's four things that you want to focus on. Number one is your health. Why? Well, because without that, you'll give everything to get it back. Trust me. Yep. The next thing is your relationships. The next thing is your uh, money, basically. And the next thing is your, you know, your information, your belief system. So I focus on my health by working out, getting blood rate going or blood flow going, heart rate up. It's easy. It doesn't even take money. If you don't have any money, you can still do it. But focus on your health a little bit. Number two, focus on your relationships. How do I do that? I write down five names of people that I'm going to reach out to during the day mm. and see if they uh, need anything or if I can help them in any way or just let them know that I appreciate them or thinking about them. So, so if you do five every single day times 365 days, dude, you're going to have a lot better relationships at the end of that year. So I focus on it every day by just simply texting five people or email sometimes a letter whatever five people every day and then I focus on my belief system by reading I read 10 20 30 yeah. 40 50 pages every single day no matter what and sometimes I'll listen to it but to me that is reading and then and then I'll focus on my money how well I'll write down four or five things that I have to focus on today to drive revenue today because I want to focus on it why because I want it and if you focus on shit, it tends to grow and yep. develop. And if you ignore it, it tends to dwindle and die. So a lot of people, they're not focused on money. They're told not to, matter of fact. Or they're just already uh, so entrenched in average that they don't understand that they need to focus on it. Yeah. Like people say, what do you mean, Brad? Well, like you go to work every day for $8 an hour, let's say. And you're dreaming of being rich. Well, then why are you working for $8 an hour? Well, I got to pay my bills. Why do you think you can't pay your bills if you stopped working for eight dollars an hour? Well, what would I do exactly? What would you do? Isn't there anything that, that you can do that's worth more than eight dollars an hour? And then people start thinking. And dude, I've had people say you changed my life because of that. Now I'm a successful entrepreneur because of that. Yeah. Well, no, you changed your life because of that. Mm. But the, that's what I do every single morning. I call it the million dollar morning. I love that. So what's changed my life the most in the in the last year would be consistently waking up being grateful focusing on the health the belief system the money yep. and the relationships beautiful beautiful man all right let's wrap things up two last questions what are you excited about right now and then where do people where do you want them to follow you at i mean you know you can follow me on instagram or youtube or tiktok or wherever i'm at <laughs> you know I prefer youtube okay you know i'm trying to get my youtube subscribe I mean I got a million on Instagram yeah I got like two and a half million on TikTok and it's like why don't those people on TikTok go, go follow YouTube. me on YouTube it don't make any sense dude we're, we're in the same and boat then, and yeah. then and then threads just came out uh -huh. so I'm like okay I'll go to threads I got like 60,000 on threads and I'm yep. like dude there's a million motherfuckers following me and now only 60,000 want to want to hear from me on threads it doesn't make any sense so I even tweeted or not tweeted I threaded yeah you know I threaded you know I think I think threads is a great way to see how many followers you really have. Sure. Because I might have a million, but if they're not willing to follow me here, are they followers? Mm. I don't think so. And then not to mention, are they real? Well, again, dude, I've never paid for a follower. I've never done a contest or anything like yeah. I have built those followers the hard way, mm. the real way. Yep. Not, I'm not necessarily bragging about it. I'm just saying it's the truth. Yep. But look, dude, only 60,000 of them came over to Threads. Are they really followers? That's I a good question, it. man. I don't get it, dude. So when you say, where should they follow you? Well, if you're new and you've never followed me, start with YouTube. Yes, YouTube number one. Then go to Instagram. And Threads. Then go to Facebook. <laughs> then go to LinkedIn. Then go to TikTok. No, no, you can go to TikTok earlier if you want. <laughs> follow me everywhere. Everywhere. All right, man. And what are you excited about? What's coming up? Anything cool? Dude, I'm excited about uh, becoming a better human being. I'm, mm. I'm excited about the future. I'm excited about tomorrow. Uh, I get better every day. And so literally I'm excited about, you know, getting yeah. better. I just, I just can't wait to see where I'm going to be in 10 years. Yeah, man. Well, I'm excited for you. I'm excited for your journey, your spiritual journey, kind of figure out where you end up there. And man, I'm excited for... Uh, everything having you here today thank, thank you. you appreciate, appreciate you. you my pleasure man thank you